And as you can see, we are joined by naturalist Dan Hodges, who is out in the out of doors today. And where are you at, buddy? And what do you got for us? Uh, so I'm out here at Herman Woodlands, but you can find a lot of this at really uh, uh, many, all, all of our parks uh, here in the park district, even in the woodlot behind your house, perhaps. Uh, but right now we're looking at a sort of a phenomenon here in the springtime. Um, it's the spring wildflowers. It's wildflower season right now. Right behind me, if you can see, we're looking at dozens dozens of different uh, different wildflowers, some of them blooming now, some of them just getting ready to bloom. Um, and I, let, let me take you, let me show you a couple of these here, uh, Lynn. Take a look at this. Because when we get down here and start looking at these things, um, you're starting to see uh, some uh, spring beauty here. Here's a uh, yellow or a white uh, trout lily here. We keep moving back into the woods. You're coming with me. This is like a, this is like a, um, uh, it's an adventure. Chipmunk journey, absolutely. Uh, these right here are called Dutchman's Breaches. These are some of the most beautiful that I know. Keep coming back with me here because I've got, I've got, <laughs> I've got uh, cutleaf toothwort growing uh, right here. Just about some of these are closed up because it uh, was nighttime. Uh, the uh, wood anemone is about to bloom. I've got Cecil trillium back here ready to bloom. Uh, the the uh, uh, Virginia water leaf and listen, uh, Lynn, we've only gone, we've only gone maybe six feet or so. Um, there is an incredible diversity of wildflowers blooming right at our fingertips, right in your parks. So, Dan, I've noticed that when I'm out walking my parents' woods, there's quite a bit of activity as far as flowers right now in the spring, but then they kind of disappear for the summer. Well, what's going on? What's the reasoning behind that? Absolutely. So the, this phenomena is taking advantage of a very specific period of time. Uh, so what we're looking at is uh, the ground warm enough um, in the springtime, but if you look up, there's not a lot of leaf cover over our heads. So all of the sunlight is being able to reach the forest floor and things are warm enough to grow. Um, soon, here in the next month or so, uh, the leaves will start to shade out the forest floor. And that brief window of time that these wildflowers take advantage of will close. And then, of course, you'll have wildflowers in the summer. Um, there's even flowers blooming in the fall. Uh, but this phenomenon of these ephemeral spring wildflowers is really uh, a fascinating part of our history. You know, uh, one of my favorite poems by William Blake says, I wandered the forest, the green leaves among, and I heard a wildflower singing a song. And I know how silly, but really I think that these flowers are more important, uh, are, are more than just their sort of physical beauty here. Um, they're, they're telling a story of uh, interaction, of ecosystem services. They're telling a story, um, you know, a weaving part of the tapestry of our eastern forest. Wildflowers are a big part of it. And you can see it. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> I'm literally within three feet of the trail. You can, you can come out and see these yourself. Wildflowers of the park district, a great time of year. Well, I saw some poison ivy, so stay away from that stuff, okay? <laughs> You know, that's good. I like to remind people of that, too. Yeah, a little poison ivy. That's okay if you know what it looks like. Uh, you don't have to go out in it. But still, like I said, you can see all this from the trail and not really even have to uh, have to worry about some of that stuff. Uh, you can enjoy wildflowers of spring right here at the Park District. Sounds good. Dan Hodges, our naturalist, with us today. And we'll be back with more right after this.